welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos and inside of the Creative Color mini series here on Free Will Photos. Today, what we're going to be looking at is the difference between saturation and vibrance. So stay tuned. Let's get into it. All right. Welcome back. Like I said, today we're looking at saturation and vibrance inside of On One Photo Raw. Now, these are two of the things that I think get misunderstood the most when it comes to editing photos. So I'm going to try and demystify it a little bit. And to do that, I have this very colorful image. Really, there's only like three or four colors in it. Uh, and then there's just like shades of the exact same color, right? Uh, moral of the story today, what we're going to do is crank up on the saturation slider. Boom. What did that just do? Well, what it did was, uh, in a nutshell, it added more color across the entire image, right? Not just in a specific area. Now, I'm going to reset that, and I'm going to drag up the Vibrant Slider. The Vibrant Slider added color to what was the middle tones of the image. That's the big difference between Vibrance and saturation all right now you are a genius and you have mastered saturation and vibrance i can end the video here and you know you guys will have a good day but i'm not going to i'm just kidding that's not exactly how it completely works right uh what's really happening here well in order for us to really figure this out let's take a look at the histogram so when i pull saturation all the way to the left i think most of us understand well, you end up with a black and white photo. Now, this is a quick way of making a black and white photo, but essentially what's actually happening is it's just reducing what color is in the photo all the way down to seemingly nothing, all right? Uh, and when you do the opposite of that, what you're doing is increasing the color to uh, as much as you can possibly pump into the photo without, and in some cases you can even overdo it, right? Whereas vibrance, on the other hand, if I pull vibrance all the way to the bottom, you see that there's still some color in here, right? And the reason for that, if you look at the histogram, had a mental breakdown there, didn't know what to call this thing. It's the histogram, guys. Um, if you look at the histogram, you can see that I still have color here in the middle ranges. All it did was really reduce the color on the outside. Now, if I were to pull the vibrance up, pay attention to the histogram. You see how the color starts to spread towards the edges, but it doesn't quite get there until about this point, right? The color range of this image, uh, so to speak, is all the way at the black points here. So uh, I'm getting a lot of color detail there and I'm getting a lot of color detail here. Now, I'm not gonna have any clipping or at least I shouldn't I'll turn on my clipping mask just to make sure. I'm not gonna have any clipping because this white or silver looking uh, color in the histogram, that is your tone. This is where your brightness or your luminance values live. So it's when this portion starts to get over to the far left of your image that you start to see clipping, all right? Or far left or far right or whichever. The, the furthest ends of your histogram, that's when you start to see clipping. Well, let's go ahead and reset Vibrance one more time. And this time we're gonna take a look at saturation. Now, pay attention to what happens in the histogram when I move saturation to the right. Now, as you're seeing, I'm getting more color but it's only going into the darker areas for this particular image, right? Because this isn't moving very much. I'm going to reset that. And then I'm just going to drag this and it doesn't hit that point where I have color detail all the way over in the right side uh, until really at 100%. So what does that mean for our photos? Well, Moral of the story, I recommend that you use a little bit of saturation to get the ball rolling as far as how much punch do I want in the overall image, right? 
So I can move my saturation until I start to see the orange and the blues look the way that I think that they should. And that may be about where I want that. Now, if I want to put a little bit more pop, right? There's the punch and then there's like the sting or the cake and then there's the cherry on top, however you wanna look at it. That's where I start to mess around with vibrance. And vibrance is really going to help me fine tune where I want those uh, colors to be. Now, mind you, vibrance is also brightening the color just a little bit. So it's adding a little bit of that brightness that we talked about in the hue, saturation, and brightness video. It's adding just a little bit of that, not a whole lot. Uh, and we can see that because over here in the right hand side, as it starts to spread that color range uh, across the histogram or across the color range of the photo, uh, that's essentially what vibrance does. So every image is going to need a different amount of saturation of vibrance. I think by this point, uh, if you've watched any of my photo editing videos, I think you understand that much. Um, however, most of the time you do not need to crank these to the hundred percent mark. All right. Uh, I don't think that works very well. In fact, on one, and we'll just see what on one wants to do with this photo. Let me see if this will work. Nope. That's not what I wanted to do. So we'll go to develop. We'll hit AI auto and, uh, yeah. So I want these to be reset because I don't want any of that correction. I want to show you exactly what happened with just the color. All right. So on one in its infinite AI wisdom decided to get rid of some of the saturation and it dropped it down by negative five. And in the vibrance section, it decided to, oh, you can't even see. Let me get my head out of the way. There we go. All right. So in on one, when I hit the AI auto, what it decided to do was make negative five in the saturation slider. And then it went positive 15 in the vibrant slider. So what it did was it took away some of the overall color so it can compensate for making the colors a little bit brighter. All right. Uh, and that could be an editing style. Just depends on what you're trying to go for. If you want more of a muted look, then you'll probably pull down on the saturation slider quite a bit. And you may even pull back on the vibrant slider to get even more of a muted look. Now, this reminds me of the antique filter when, you know, with this type of adjustment, that's essentially what the antique filter does, but that's not what we're going for, or at least I wouldn't. Uh, so just keep that in mind. All right. If you want more of a punchy look, then you're going to adjust your vibrance and your saturation to be a little bit more on the positive side. So there you have it saturation versus vibrance uh hopefully you guys found that a little helpful if you did drop a comment down below and like the video if you have questions you know you can always drop those in the comment section below and i'd love to hear what your take is on hue or i'm sorry on saturation or vibrance which one do you prefer to use the most in your production so until next time i want you guys to stay safe one and stay inspired keep creating peace